Welcome everyone to Gamer Melt. Today, FSR supported titles leak, the first review of Intel's discrete GPU, their monster GPU's performance numbers, and it's finally happening. The GPU shortages look to be coming to an end. Okay, it's news time and first up for today, as we move closer to AMD's FSR release, information is bound to leak. And that's what just happened over at Video Cards. As you can see, Video Cards shared the titles set to support the upcoming tech at launch, along with titles coming soon and more. Starting things off, there's seven titles set for the initial release, which are meh, not bad, but the titles coming soon after are looking pretty good. We're talking Resident Evil Village, Dota 2, Far Cry 6, and more. Finally though, we have the game developers and publishers that are set to support FSR. If not now, eventually. Hopefully. We know this kind of stuff can certainly change if the tech isn't received well, but if it is true, it's bad news for Nvidia. As you can see, there's 44 that are here, and that's just at launch. Remember that AMD GPUs are used in both consoles, and given they both support it, developers will almost certainly support those first. Then the fact that AMD's FSR supports NVIDIA GPUs, there would likely be no reason to put in the extra work to support DLSS, even if it is ultimately better. At the end of the day, this is great news for those with older GPUs, though I've got great news for those wanting a new GPU. But before I get to that, for just $1.39 a month, yeah, a buck 39 a month, you can protect all of your data with today's sponsor, Atlas VPN. And yes, I said all of your data because Atlas VPN encrypts it and hides your virtual location across all of your devices. It can also unlock location-specific content. With that said, the coolest thing is their new data breach monitoring tool, which scours the internet to see if your personal information has ever been listed in recorded data breaches or data dumps. And when you click the link in the description, you'll get all of this for just $1.39 a month for three years. Plus, if you don't like it, Atlas VPN gives you a full 30-day money-back guarantee. So don't wait any longer and sign up for Atlas VPN in the description below. Next up for today, we have the first review of Intel's first discrete GPU. For those who don't know, not long ago, Intel released their first discrete GPU. The issue is that it was released to system builders only. Luckily enough, the channel ETA Prime was able to test out one of the new pre-built systems and test out the GPU. And what's great about this is that it can give us a real idea of what to expect for Intel's upcoming DG2 GPUs, though I have a leak on that coming up. First, let's go over the specs. Starting things off, it comes with 80 execution units, a TDP of 30 watts, 4 gigabytes of LPDDR4X memory, a base clock of 1.2 gigahertz, and a boost of 1.5. As you can see, during these tests, the DG1 GPU actually did fairly well. It kept most titles up at 1080p60, with some of the more intense games dipping even at 720p. He later compared it to AMD's 5700G, which shows they're right on par with one another. Of course, the 5700G is an iGPU, but remember that the DG1 is only at 30 watts, and this is Intel's first real go at this. Basically, things are looking really good for Intel's upcoming DG2 GPUs. And speaking of, we finally have some leaked performance on the infamous gaming cards in today's next story. The report originally comes from the very accurate longtime leaker Tom Apisak, and as you can see, he shared some numbers on Twitter. First up, we have a comparison between the RX 6700 XT, RTX 3070, and 448 EU GPU. Now, the first thing to note is that the 4080U GPU is an Intel part, but what's interesting is that we haven't seen a GPU with that amount of cores just yet. We've only seen a 384 and 512 EU part, so this is something new. Of course, it's certainly right in between the other two GPUs, so it makes sense. Clearly, Intel is planning for a pretty big product stack. When it comes to performance, at 1.8 GHz, Tom Mapisak is claiming 92% of the 6700 XT's performance, which really is impressive. Remember that the DG1 part was only at 1.5 GHz. Now, we don't know what benchmark this is, but given he's comparing it to AMD and Nvidia's gaming cards, I would assume it's a gaming benchmark and a desktop GPU. Regardless, this means that Intel's upcoming 512 EU cards should be able to take on at least the 6700 XT. 
Moving on, he shows the 128 EU part, which we know is a card that's coming. And what's surprising is that it actually beats NVIDIA's GTX 1650 here at 1.9 GHz. And yes, it is a bit old at this point, but we're talking their low-end part. Basically, if this is accurate, to which, given its Tom Apisac, this is likely a benchmark. So it almost certainly is real. Not only that, but remember this is still early, so there's likely more performance beyond what Tom Apisac found. And if that's the case, Intel's GPUs will be able to compete with both AMD and Nvidia. And lastly for today, it looks like the GPU shortage could finally be coming to an end. <laughs> that's right, and there's actually a few things that point to this. First up is a story from Computerbase, where they compare pricing in Europe from last month to this month. And for the first time in a while, it's actually trending down. In fact, from a single month, we're talking over 30% decrease with some of these. Not only that, but as you can see, the number of GPUs being sold have gone up significantly as well. At the same time, Tom's Hardware is seeing something similar on eBay in the US. All cards came down in price except for just one. Now, it's not at the same rate, but it's still a drop. Next is an overview from a Redditor who took the pricing of GPUs on eBay and divided them by their hash rate to see how much it costs per hash. And as you can see, costs have dropped by an average of 20%, with higher price cards coming down even faster. And finally, we have a story from Digitimes that goes over ASRock's Q2 sales number. In the story, they mention that the dropping GPU prices are due to shrinking demand from China's crypto market. They also claim that AMD cards will become more available in the second half of this year. Basically, this is looking to finally be what we've all been waiting for, the beginning of the end for these insane GPU prices. And if it truly is coming from crypto, that means there could actually be a sell-off really soon, which means prices will absolutely plummet. Fingers crossed. So while that does it for today, when these GPU prices do fully come down, what are you going to be buying first? Let me know down in the comments below. And if you liked the video, please subscribe. And as always, have a great day!